of Orthodox spirituality. A wondrous journey into Orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea. We mustn't jump to conclusions. It could be that someone is feeling so much pain at the time of his death that his face becomes distorted, making others think that he's not in a good spiritual state. However, a pained expression differs from a wild and horrified one. While the poor man suffers in his pain, the others may, may mistakenly think that he is struggling with the demons who have come to take his soul. Yeroda, does a well-prepared soul have to pass through the toll gates? When a soul is well-prepared and ascending to heaven, the demons can't assault it. If it isn't prepared, it is tormented by the demons. Sometimes God may allow a soul with unpaid debts at the time of his death to see the toll gates so that we who will continue to live struggle to repay our debts here do you remember reading about the event with Theodora see Gregorius the monk the tolls of the souls at the hour of death in other words God provides that some people see certain things to help others repent in the life of St. Ephrosinus, for example, we read that after the vision he experienced, the abbot found himself with the apples in his hand for the others to see and be helped in their spiritual life. St. Ephrosinus served as the cook in a Cenobitic monastery. He had secretly cultivated the virtues and attained a high spiritual state. One night, the abbot was praying to God to reveal to him which brother was the most virtuous in the monastery. During his prayer, he fell into ecstasy and found himself in a garden full of many extraordinary goods. While he tried in vain to pick some fruit from the trees, he saw in front of him St. Ephrosinus enjoying all that splendor and asked him for some of the fruit. The saint picked three apples and gave them to him. When the abbot recovered from that vision, he found himself holding the three apples, which had an extraordinary fragrance. From St. Ephrosinus, the abbot learned that that night he had indeed been where the gifts are that will be inherited by those who love God. Sometimes God will provide for a soul to have a dialogue at the time of death so that the person himself may repent even at the last minute or for the benefit of those who are listening. You see, God has many ways to save people. Sometimes he helps with angels, other times with trials and tribulations, and still at other times through various signs. I once met a woman who treated her husband and her mother-in-law horribly, beating them both. She wandered around the neighborhood to chat while sending her elderly mother-in-law to work in the field some two hours' walk from there. Every single day, her mother-in-law dragged herself to the field and worked hard from morning to night without complaining. 
One day, upon returning home completely exhausted, she fell to the ground and kept telling her daughter-in-law, Archangel Michael is taking my soul. Clean up the blood, my child, clean up the blood. What blood, what blood? The daughter-in-law asked her anxiously because she could not see any blood on her. Here, my child, the blood that is flowing here, clean it up. As the daughter-in-law turned to look again, the mother-in-law expired. After this incident, the daughter-in-law came to her senses and made a dramatic change in her life. The wild beast became a lamb. It was a providential act of God to have seen her mother-in-law dying with those words and to believe that the Archangel Michael takes souls supposedly with his sword, thus causing her to fear God and to repent. That is to say, God spoke to her in a language she could understand in order to bring her to her senses, since apparently she had a good disposition. And when the dying Yaroda are calling their departed relatives, what is the meaning of that? This too happens many times in order to provide an example for others who are standing by. I knew a wealthy lady who was a saintly woman. She had not married and lived with her sister to whom she had gifted all her property. At the time of his death, her brother-in-law, who died after her, was calling out to her, Come, Despina, let us forgive each other. Forgive me, I have tormented you so much. Please forgive me. They asked him, Where is Despina? There, don't you see her? She's right there. And with that last word, he expired. Yeroda, can people be forgiven like that, even at the last moment of their life, by someone who is already dead? God permits people to be forgiven, even in this manner, because people can repent at the hour of their death and feel the need to ask for forgiveness. Suicide Yeroda, some people who encounter a great difficulty in their life immediately think of committing suicide. Their thinking is full of egoism. Most people who commit suicide listen to the devil who tells them that they will be spared the inner torment they are experiencing if they end their life and out of pride they take their own life. If, for example, someone has stolen and is caught, he says, Well, it's over. I've become an embarrassment now. Instead of repenting, humbling himself, confessing, paying the consequences, in gaining redemption, he commits suicide. Another person may commit suicide because his child is paralyzed. How is it that I have a paralyzed child, me? He says to himself and despairs. If he's responsible for this condition and acknowledges it, then let him repent. But how can he end his life and leave his child helpless on the street? Is he not more responsible then? Yeroda, we often hear that someone who had committed suicide also had psychological problems. Those who have psychological problems and commit suicide have extenuating circumstances because they are mentally unstable. Even when they see some clouds over their head, they feel crushed. And if they also have some worry, then they have double the clouds. The Church does not pray for those who commit suicide without having been mentally ill or for those who are heretics. It only relegates them to the mercy and judgment of God. The priest does not commemorate them at the proscomidi or place them on the patent because by having committed suicide, they renounced and rejected life, which is a gift from God. 
It is as if they have thrown everything in the face of God. We must do a great deal of praying for those who commit suicide so that the benevolent God will do something for them as well, especially when we don't know what drove them to suicide or what condition they were in at the last minute. It is possible that even in their dying moments they repented and asked for forgiveness from God, in which case their soul would have been received by an angel of the Lord. I had once heard about a young girl in a village who took her goat to pasture. She tied the goat in the meadow and went a little further to play. The girl got carried away playing and the goat got loose and wandered away. She looked for it but couldn't find it and returned home without the goat. Her father was very angry, beat her, and threw her out of the house. Go and find the goat, he said. If you don't find it, go and hang yourself. The poor child went out to look for the goat. It got dark and she still hadn't returned home. Seeing that it was evening, the parents got very worried and went out looking for her. They searched and found their child hanging from a tree. She had tied the rope that was used for the goat around her neck and hanged herself from the tree. The dear little girl had such filotimo. She had taken literally the words her father had spoken in anger. They buried the child outside the cemetery. The church, of course, did well to bury this child outside the cemetery as a reminder to those contemplating suicide for the slightest reason. But Christ will also do well if he were to receive her into paradise. Chapter 2 Ye sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 the death of children. Yeronda, a mother whose child died nine years ago, is asking you to pray that she may see her child, even if it is only in her dreams, and thus be consoled. How old was the child? Was he young? This is significant. If the child was young and the mother is in such a condition that she won't be upset should the child appear, then she will see him. The mother is the cause for the child not appearing to her. Yeroda, is it possible that the child, instead of appearing to the mother who is seeking this consolation, may appear to someone else? Of course it is possible. God works things out accordingly. When I hear about some young person's death, I am saddened, but my sorrow is a human sorrow. This is because if we examine things a little more deeply, we will see that as one matures and has more and greater struggles to attend to, one accumulates more and more sins. This is especially true in the case of of a secular person who instead of improving his spiritual condition as the years pass makes it worse with his worldly concerns with injustices with injustices he may have committed and so forth in this sense it can be a gain for someone to be taken young by God Yeroda, why does God allow so many young people to die? No one has made an agreement with God as to when he will die. God takes each person at the very best time of his life 
in a particular manner in order to save his soul. If he sees that someone will improve, God will give him time to live. But if he sees that he will become worse, God takes him in order to save him. God will bring into his presence some who lead a sinful life, but who have the disposition to do good, even before they have a chance to do this good, only because he knows that they would have done this good as soon as they were given the opportunity. It is as if he were telling them, Don't weary yourself. Your good disposition has sufficed. Also, God chooses to take someone who is very good because paradise needs more blossoms. Naturally, parents and relatives have a hard time understanding this. You see, a young child dies and Christ takes the child into his embrace as a little angel. Although the parents will cry and grieve, they should be joyful because they cannot know how their child would have been had he grown up. Could that child have been saved? In 1924, when we were leaving Asia Minor on a ship to come to Greece, I was an infant. The ship was filled with refugees, and as my mother had wrapped me in swaddling clothes, one of the sailors accidentally stepped on me. My mother thought I had died and started to cry. One of the other women of our village unraveled the swaddling cloths and saw that nothing had happened to me. Had I died then, I would have certainly gone to paradise. Now that I am a man of many years and have made such an ascetic struggle, I am not certain that I will go to paradise. The death of a child can help the parents. They should know that from that moment on, they have an ambassador in paradise. When such parents die, their children will appear with angelic wings at the gates of paradise to receive their souls. This is not a small matter. Again, to the little children who have suffered here from illnesses or from some disability, Christ will say, Come into paradise and select the best place. And then the children will say to him, It is very beautiful here, beloved Savior, but we want to have our dear mother with us. And Christ will then listen and in some way save the mother also. Of course, mothers should not go to the other extreme. Some mothers fall into delusion, believing that their dead child has attained sainthood. One mother wanted to give me something from her son's things as a blessing because she believed that he had become a saint. Is it a blessing to be giving away his personal things to people? She asked me. No, I said. It is better if you do not give his things away. Another mother had placed a photograph of her son, who had been killed by the Germans on the crucifix on Holy Thursday. She kept saying, My son too died like Christ. 
the women who were keeping an all-night vigil at the crucifix kept silent because they didn't want to hurt her. What could they say to her? She was deeply wounded. Consolation for those who grieve. Yeroda, people need so much strength to face an unexpected death. If they have comprehended the more profound meaning of life, they will find the strength to face death because they face death spiritually. So many children are destroyed with those motorbikes. So many young men are killed with the motorcycles. They do wheelies on their motorcycles, making it easier to have an accident and sustain serious head injuries. They think it's a big deal to do a bigger wheelie than the next guy. I was doing a wheelie when I crashed, they say with bravado. Do you see what the devil incites them to do in order to injure their heads? Had they done otherwise, even if they did have some accident, they could have been mildly injured elsewhere and not have been maimed for life. But for God to have allowed the evil of the devil or the carelessness of another It means that some good can come out of it. Yeroda, why then does our church pray that we may be protected from sudden death? That is another matter. The prayer asks that we not be found unprepared when sudden death strikes. Dear listeners, our show has come to an end. Thank you for listening. We will continue where we left off in our next show. Until then, be well. Have mercy on me, O God, in the greatness of your love and in the abundance of your tender mercies. Wipe out my offense. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and bless of Orthodox Spirituality. A wondrous journey into Orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea.